Hey fam, let's discuss RFID implants, the short-term business case for that, a startup idea I've got in mind, um, and just the long-term implications as transhumanism and implants and body modding. Let's go. So RFID implants have been around for ages. Um, we, we typically like uh, chip our, our pets, our cats and dogs with RFID implants. But now uh, people are starting to get them. I know a bunch of friends who have them already. So what are they? They're just little chips, like a little bit bigger than a grain of rice that you uh, implant under your skin. Most people typically get them in the fleshy part of their hand there, or you can actually get them into your fingers. I haven't got one yet, but I've heard the pain isn't that bad. It's, it's like just, it just goes in pretty easily. <laughs> And so why are people getting them? Well, you can actually program them. So you can read it from your phone and you can actually write it from your phone. So you can add like data on there or you can actually use it to open up door locks, smart locks, all sorts of things like that. And I really want to get one, but only if I can replace my wallet. So in my wallet, there is like a driver's license, an Opal card, which is kind of like our public transport card, um, and my Visa debit card. That's about it, and cash and keys. And so keys can pretty easily be replaced now. Um, you just basically buy a smart lock or you can make your own um, because it's just using, it's either using a combination of NFC or RFID to open it like wireless. But so even, even though uh, the Opal card and the Visa debit card are both using kind of wireless technology, I'm not sure if it's RFID or NFC, um, the problem is they're encrypted, so you'd have to actually have a partnership to work with them to add it to their But I've heard that um, some companies have actually already arranged partnerships with Visa and with Opal to do that. So here's the, here's the use case, here's the imagined future and how you can get rid of your wallet and why everyone will get an implant. So imagine you go onto a website and you order an RFID implant. So you can actually buy these and implant them yourselves, but people would probably be much more comfortable going to like a tattoo parlor and get it properly done. So imagine it's hundred bucks and you basically book in a nearby uh, tattoo parlor place um, and you go and get the implant done and it's painless, quick, it takes like five minutes, you're done and then you get an app. You down. Within the app you'd be able to register and kind of like secure and pair it with your, with your implant and then you'd be able to add your Opal card on there, like scan your Opal card on your phone and then add it into the, the RFID implant as well as your driver. So pretty much in the space of like half an hour I can replace my entire wallet. I mean I've gone on the website, I've paid the money, I've booked the, a local appointment, I've got the, uh, the implant and now I'm just adding all my cards and keys and cash on the app would have a really simple UI to be able to just flick through the different cards. So you could add like not only like driver's license and Opal card and credit card, but you could also add like, um, you know, local club memberships and any other card you have. And then you also add a subscription model service as well. So if you want to add more than say three or four cards, you have to pay $5 a month or $10 a month or something like that to upsell and kind of keep a membership subscription going. Shit, man, you could probably even like organize a partnership with Visa where you take a tiny, tiny percentage of each transaction that occurs on that card as a kind of kickback, as like a referral to Visa card. And then see, as much as getting an implant is like a scary thing for most people, um, I think the convenience factor of being able to literally get rid of your wallet and keys and replace it with this would be awesome. I mean, you can tap up to any surface and pay for it, use your Opal card. I think the novelty factor of being able to pay for, for services and stuff, like with a Visa card, just using your hand, and also using Opal, and then unlocking your door, I think that'd be awesome to show off. You're the wizard, Harry! Okay, but then what next? Well, you could next level it and basically um, store all that information in an encrypted format on the blockchain and um, assign an IPv6 address to that implant. Yeah. I mean, that could become your proof of individuality, your kind of like identity stake that's decentralized, not owned by any company. Um, and you could start that whole like Kyrium concept, that IPv6 concept that I mentioned a few episodes back. I've got an awesome online mate, uh, Johan, who's working on uh, proof of individuality and tax themes and stuff like that. So that could maybe be a good starting point. You just kind of like, you have a registered IP, IPv6 plus a hash of all. So that system took off and everyone started getting RFID in place. I mean, it's a scary thing because it could be like controlled and manipulated and all that crap. But um, it would be kind of like the mainstream and the start of the cyborg transhumanism movement. So another one of my awesome online mates, uh, Tim Kennan, he's kind of like the, the leading uh, transhumanist cyborg guy. He's implanted himself with some crazy stuff and one of his, his company, Grindhouse White Wears, doing some amazing stuff. The thing is, the, the implants at the moment in that the higher level, the transhumanist area, are very bulky and big and they don't really add much functionality, so it's not really for the mainstream. I'm not sure what the mainstream would want to implant. So Grindhouse has this new device called the North Star, which basically has a, a ring of LEDs underneath the skin, so it's like subdermal uh, LED stuff, which is really cool. I think if they can get that tech to the point where it's it's super safe and it's like smaller than a, a regular, like a, a small coin, I think a lot of people would get that if you paired it with this RFID feet functionality as well. Because then you can do simple stuff like have a digital clock showing underneath your skin um, and just do like little notifications to so say if you get a message, it pairs with your phone and it kind of like, it might flash a blue or a red. Or even something as simple as like when you do use the RFID implant to pay for something or to like use Opal or whatever, maybe it flashes, you get a little ring of LEDs that's, that light up, which would be really cool. And that's really just to start some of these hardcore uh, transhumanists and bio, uh, body monitors that are playing with like messing with your senses because you're essentially having an interface into the nervous system of your body and so you can mess with that. The simplest non-tech version of that is implanting a neodymium magnet into your finger and you can actually feel magnetic uh, kind of like magnetic fields and electricity and stuff like that with your hand. Other people have done stuff where they're playing with uh, compasses so every time you turn north it kind of like sends a little bit of a shock or something or some type of like notification to your body that says to you this is true north. 
And then of course there's the whole like health data angle uh, where obviously like our body, all of our biometrics should be recorded and streamed in real time so our doctor can be checking ahead of time and bringing us in when they see an issue. But anyway, I think the first starting point is this RFID implant to replace your wallets. I think that the mainstream will actually accept that. Um, and once you get the mainstream and the masses starting to accept implants, then the doors open.